And I've got comments pulled up there. I've got butternut slub in the background. Hi, Trish. Thank you for joining me. I'm sorry I'm late. <sighs> okay, so today we're going to talk about the butternut slub cow, which is behind me on the side. <laughs> I always get confused. It's backwards. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about the stitches. And of course, I'm going to show you how you can wear it and how it fits. And we're going to talk about some yarn options because this is, you can do lots of different things with this. All right. So here she is. She is a fit and flare cowl. And so it's much wider at the bottom than it is at the top. And so it's designed to fit close around your neck at the top and then flare out so that it sits on your shoulders and it can go under a jacket nicely. It'll stay up and keep your ne neck warm. A lot of cows kind of just scrunch down unless they're really wide. And so this kind of solves that problem by making it a close cowl at the top and then you still get the scrunchy look towards the bottom. So we used, or I used, for this one I used two fingering weight yarns. The orange is a wor uh, a worsted weight, no, uh, a wool and silk blend from Kim Dye's yarn. And then the slubbies is a slubby yarn. Crumble slubby is what she calls it. And it's kind of a one of those crimpy yarns. And then the slubs are every few inches. And sorry, sorry about that. <laughs> that's, that's our... Uh, vacuum cleaner robot thing. Um, so yeah, I used marling in this sample, but it's the equivalent of a worsted weight yarn. In fact, this was originally designed with some of my hand spun. So this was about a worsted weight hand spun, that's the back. And I, it was originally designed as a possible submission for an event they were looking for a craft along piece and they wanted it to be one skein of yarn beginner friendly and hand spun friendly and so that's why i designed it with my hand spun here and the stitches are simple i work into so you've got single crochets and double crochets but the double crochets are worked into the back loop only of the single crochets and i do have a designated video for that stitch um if you go to my website or my YouTube channel, you can find that standalone tutorial for working into the back loop only. But the pattern itself, of course, also has a video that will show you not only working into the back loop, but kind of how I handle these slubby yarns because sometimes they get hung up on the back. So like on the inside here, we've got lots of slubs on the inside as well on the out as as well as on the outside. So sometimes you can manipulate that a little bit. So that is, Trish, you wanna make it out of tweed? Yes, I think it would be really pretty like that um, in, a, in a tweedy yarn with those little nips. I think it'd be great. So let me see, see I can't even find the back, which is, which is a good thing. <laughs> so one of the tips that I share with you in the pattern is instead of joining your rounds because this is worked in join rounds so you should be able to kind of see right there that line but when you join your round you you normally join with a slip stitch right but for this i'm going to show you how to join with a an alternative slip stitch where you go into the back side you know what? i think i need to do a video for that technique on its own I'm going to put that on my list because there there are other cases when you might want to do that. So like in a hat, if you're joining in the round, taller stitches like a double crochet where you get more of a, of a gap. If you do that alternate join where you insert, your, you remove your hook from the loop, you insert it from the back to the front instead, and then you put the loop back on your hook and pull it through so that it's joined with the loop on the back side of your fabric instead of on the front side. And then you can do your chain too, and it will just sort of disappear into the background. And it's also, Trish, I'll do that. I'll, I'll definitely get that done for you guys sooner rather than later. And it's also a great choice. I ended up doing it because I used the working into the back loop. And so I probably can't even get this in the light and close enough 
for you to see. So here, these are the, the, the front loops that are left unworked. And over here, right here, no, nope, this way. This, this is where the join is. I'm trying to do this backwards. <laughs> so coming down through there, that's where the join is. And because I use that alternative slip stitch join, it leaves those front loops free and unobstructed. And so that join is basically invisible. You, I mean, you saw me kind of flipping through here trying to find the back of it because um, it's, it's a, lot, a lot easier to, to miss it when you have a seamless or nearly seamless join like that. So, hi Mary, welcome. Okay, so let's pull it on and I'll show you how it works. All right, so it's designed to be a close fit. So I think unblocked, it was 17 inches around and then after blocking, and I knew this yarn would relax a little bit um, with, with blocking. And so after blocking, I think it's about 18 inches. So you can you can fold this down if you want to or leave it leave it up. So you see you've got this whole section here that wants to stand up and keep your neck warm. And then the flared section here, I'll turn around so you can see. And so it comes as far up as you wanted to, if you wanted to, you could fold it down so it didn't go as far up like if it's scrunching up your hair and then it comes down and around. And so it covers up so like I have a little bit of a, a v-neck shirt here and this covers it up so that you you stay warm for from from here all the way up your neck and then it also fits pretty easily under a jacket so it just goes right over the top of it and you don't have a bunch of bulk in the back up here right and then you can you can bring this forward if you wanted to, or just leave it all scrunchy, however you want it. And then of course you can customize it. So if you've got like a, a short neck or a long neck, you can make this section shorter or longer to suit your preferences. And then you could keep going. You could make this a little bit longer. Say I'm, I'm pretty petite. I'm, I'm only five feet tall, I'm short. Um, and so I don't, I don't have very wide shoulders. And so I, I stopped this when it was, like 36 inches around maybe, I don't remember, it's in the pattern. Um, but if you have broader shoulders, then you could keep going and just make make a few more uh, increase rounds, just space them out however it seemed to, to work out um, to make it a little bit wider and then it would be, it would cover more this way. So, yep, there she is. <laughs> Trish, brilliant, thank you. I'm not sure that it's, it's quite that good, but it, it does kind of solve a problem that some of us have with, with cowls. Like we, we like cowls because they're easy to wear. You just throw them on, right? And you don't have to worry about them falling off or dragging in the dirt or, or whatever. But most cowls, unless they're really long, they, they come down more like this, right? So they, they, they kind of relax down and squish down. But this, because it's got this fitted section, and I think mine is about five inches. It may have blocked a little bit longer, but I think it's about five inches before I start increasing for that section. So, and then, like I said, you can, you can, if you don't want to do the marling with the, with the two fingering weight yarns, you can use a worsted weight yarn for this. And um, if you wanted to adapt it, use a lighter weight yarn or a heavier weight yarn, you could do that as well. You might have to, make adjustments down here. If you use a lighter weight yarn, you might have to improvise adding additional repeats because I didn't have, I couldn't sort out a specific sequence that worked evenly every time. And so I kind of just went with what worked. <laughs> um, no, you know what? I think this one did stack up. I'm thinking of the hat. Shh, I'm not supposed to talk about that. But since I already mentioned this, I'm also working on a pattern for hat in the same style. So um, yeah, this I had to play with the increases for this one for the crown a lot more than I did on this one. So this one is even. You could continue doing increases in the same way as before. So I was wrong about that. Don't listen to me. I'm just the designer. 
Trish, you hate having a cold neck. <laughs> yes. No, it's not too bulky. I mean, and if you if you wanted it to be to be a little less scrunchy, you just make this part shorter. You don't do as many repeats. Um, so yeah, let since I already mentioned it, uh, we'll show you the hat too. So you can do it scrunchy, or you can pull it down, or you can fold up the brim. Ta-da! So that's the hat. It'll be, I'm working on finalizing the pattern, and that'll go into testing hopefully next week. So if you're interested, let me know. Um, let me see. Do we have any other questions? Oh, my hair's all fuzzy-wuzzy now from pulling cowls on and off and hats. Um, Trish, do you have any questions? Mary? We've got a couple minutes if you do. No? Okay, well, I'm going to let you guys go then. Thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoy this little cowl. It's it's a quick make, too. Like, I think I spent about five hours on it. Someone else told me it, she only took like two and a half hours. So, yeah. Thank you, Trish. I, I'm, I'm pretty tickled with the way the hat turned out. Oh, let me try them on together. I haven't done that yet. I'll be, I'll be extra, 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 extra pumpkin spice. <laughs> oh yeah, that's, that's, that's a lot of texture right there. <laughs> I don't know if I would wear them together, but there, there you have it. That's, that's the hat and the cowl. And like I said, that one will hopefully be going into testing next week for potentially a release next month. So that's ex my exciting news for you today. And with that, I'm going to let you guys go. I'll talk to you next time. Bye.